Hi, my name is Kathleen. I'm a professional psychologist and this is a short little video about why it might be time for you to stop reading self-help books. I'm going to share my own reasons for why I've, I've neglected self-improvement reading recently. If you're feeling a bit of burnout from reading self-improvement books, then keep watching. Okay, so to start things off, probably one of my pet peeves of psychology as a discipline is its focus on figuring out what's wrong with the individual and then how to fix it. It means means that we focus less on what a person is doing well at already or, or what they can do. However, as humans, it's kind of natural that we focus on a problem in general. It stems back to that reptilian brain. There's an ancient mechanism in our brain that is hyper-focused on working out how we can fit into society, how we can earn an income, how we can have shelter, how we can keep ourselves safe. This is the part of our brain that has allowed us to evolve as a species. So of course, you know, it is important that we do focus on, to some extent on how we can improve, how we can do better. And from this perspective, I really think that this is why self-help books can be so appealing to us. They provide us with the antidote, they show us what the problem is, and then they give us the solution. And look, they're always jam-packed with really useful information that helps you become more insightful and more self-aware, which are all inherently good things to have, right? On the flip side though, I personally have noticed that from reading a lot of self-help books and books about psychology, my inner critical voice has become a lot more heightened. When I make a mistake or when I'm not my most productive self, not only do I have that critical voice going off in my head, I also have all the evidence backing it up. And I guess this combination just starts to instill a sense of pressure to try and be more perfect. What I've realized though is that life is just too short to be hyper-focused on trying to get everything right all of the time. We have to learn how to be kinder to ourselves and sometimes in order to do that we have to take a step back from self-development. The second reason why I'm not reading any self-development books at the moment is because eventually after you've read enough they start to sound kind of similar. I realize I'm generalizing a little bit here but I've just noticed that the same messages or the same themes tend to come up, which include things like break everything down into small, manageable, smart steps. While you can't choose the circumstances you were born into, you do have the power of perspective in how you want to choose to see a situation and this is your superpower. Get really, really clear on what your values are and actively try and live them out. Relationships are the key to joy, meaning and longevity, so invest your time wisely into meaningful relationships. And to pursue mastery at something, really put your heart into it. Don't strive to be famous, strive to be talented. Work at your craft consistently and strive to be the best at this. Yeah, I guess those are some of the key messages that have just really stood out for me from reading these books. And it's really helpful to be reminded of these messages. However, without action, they don't have the desired effect. Too often, we're guilty of reading the book and then putting it to the side and moving on to the next one without actually putting into practice what we've just learned. We don't make time to actually do the practical work, like sit down and figure out what our values are or work out what the big goal is and break it down into those small steps then start to actually do them. So yeah, this basically leads me to my third and final point. And this might be a little bit controversial, but I do think sometimes it's good to step away from learning and just focus on action. My reason for this is that in this day and age, there's just so much information out there to the point that it is overwhelming. We read a self-help book and then we put it down for a while or we move on to the next book without necessarily implementing what we've learned. And of course, it's not just books. This also happens on apps like TikTok. We scroll through, watch some really interesting videos and think, yeah, I'll definitely do that. And then we save it in our videos only to never watch it again, never do that practical strategy they suggested. It just gets neglected or lost in that space for saving videos. We listen to podcasts and audiobooks and even YouTube videos, but do we actually practice the tips and strategies that they teach us? A lot of the time, probably not. And the reason for this is that humans can be a bit slow at putting new habits into their routine. Inherently, we like to do what takes as little effort as possible. Adding something new into the routine, it's a lot. It can feel a bit overwhelming, especially in an environment where we just have so much information coming at us from 
all different angles throughout the day. So my take home is that during some periods of my life, I do take a break from reading self-help books and even using social media and watching TV and consuming information to the best of my ability. Instead, I will focus on whatever it is that I want to get done or things that I enjoy and find meaningful. And I will try and be compassionate towards myself, kind to myself, especially if I don't get it 100% right. I'll just take it day by day as it comes. That's the phase of my life that I'm in right now. Of course it varies, but right now I'm really focusing on preparing for an exam and just trying to take my life day by day and still find the joy and the meaning in it. So I really hope this video helps encourage you to take a step back from self-help books or social media, whatever it is, and instead focus on the here and now, focus on whatever skill it is you want to learn, whatever it is you want to do with your time and dedicate time to actually doing that and getting it done. I hope this video was helpful. Maybe I'll see you in another video. Maybe I won't, but regardless, enjoy the rest of your day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.